Old Dogs Go to Heaven from 1989, the third and final film of the early Don Bluth era, is considered a classic today. You remember this one, right? The film supposedly made for children, given the themes present in the movie like gambling, murder, alcoholism, child kidnapping, gun violence, and eternal damnation. You know, completely normal stuff for kids. At the time of its release, it didn't actually do terribly bad since they did manage nearly doubling their $13.8 million budget at the box office. This was in stark contrast, however, to the early success of The Land Before Time. Unfortunately for Don Bluth and his early successes with An American Tale and The Land Before Time, All Dogs Go to Heaven never really stood a chance, regardless of its themes, because Disney's The Little Mermaid completely overshadowed it that same year in, well, everything really. All Dogs Go to Heaven did finally release in high definition Blu-ray back in 2011, so I finally got around to rewatching this again and it really got me thinking. Who was this film actually made for? To answer that question, we have to back up a bit. Don Bluth Entertainment, which formed under the early successful films, was conceived as an alternative competitor to Disney. They even drew in the support of famous directors like Steven Spielberg and George Lucas that helped shape the classics this studio became known for. However, in rewatching films of that early era competition with the Disney Renaissance, there are definitely starker contrasts in the addition of themes that are more noticeable to adults than children. I mean, really as a kid, the darker themes in All Dogs Go to Heaven it didn't matter because I saw a talking dog and that was the hook for me. And you know, that one song, you know the one. Let's make sweet harmony. Oh, let's make music together, baby. This movie wasn't really anything different in that regard, but Don Bluth was largely free from any control of Spielberg or Lucas to create the kind of dark comedy film we know of today. This movie, like its predecessors, were really meant to establish this particular style of film and animation. Even The Land Before Time, which arguably did better than this one, did not shy away from depicting specific themes. Each film dealt with something different. An American Tale, Immigration, The Land Before Time, Mortality and Discrimination, and then we have All Dogs Go to Heaven, which talks about exploitation, love, and redemption. And like some of the concepts in American Tale, likewise, the themes in All Dogs Go to Heaven are unapologetic in the depictions that Don Bluth wanted to show through animated tales. The story starts with Charlie Barkin, our main protagonist and his friend Itchy in 1939 New Orleans, escaping from the most depressing dog pound ever predicted. Hell, they even have armed guards shooting what may as well be artillery shells at them. Later, these two end up at a casino they helped run, which is now being run by this guy. Who you know is definitely up to no good with that face. Afterwards, on immediately finding out about Charlie's release, this guy Carface decides to double-cross his old business partner, giving him none of the casino profits he was owed, and then just decides to straight up kill Charlie by running him over with a car while he's drunk and blindfolded. This already reminds me of most 1980s gangster films. Maybe they were thinking, now this is a gritty animation for adults, and make sure we get Burt Reynolds to voice for the dog. Instant box office hit. In actuality, the film was originally going to be a series of short detective stories until it was rewritten and influenced by It's a Wonderful Life, Little Miss Marker, and A Guy Named Joe. Of course, Charlie ends up dead, but they never actually show the car hitting him. I don't think anybody would have wanted to see Charlie's mangled body. Then he ends up in heaven, but mostly he is angered that he dies such an 
ignominious death and decides to rewind his watch, which symbolizes the length of life that everything has, and then he is sent back to Earth. Definitely an example of unfinished business, a relatable anxiety for people. Charlie being Charlie in this movie never uses his new lease on life for good pretty much the entire second act in this movie where he meets up with a surprised Itchy commenting on how cold he feels which made me wonder is Charlie an undead zombie dog? Anyways, he decides to kidnap a little girl and Marie who can talk to animals who had already been kidnapped and exploited by Carface to begin with in order to win bets on rat races. Anne Marie decides to go with them because Charlie at least promises to find a human family to adopt her. And I really have to say that Anne Marie is easily a star of this film too, especially giving kids someone to relate to. Probably every kid wishes that they could talk to animals. Unfortunately, Charlie doesn't really actively try to fulfill his promise and Anne Marie finds out about his manipulative behavior and ends up befriending a family on her own. It's really only at the end of the film that the main character finally redeems himself by giving his life for Anne Marie. It's actually incredibly sad and emotional and it definitely delivers on having Charlie regretting what he had been doing. Basically, no matter what, even a dog or person being bad will be given a second chance because he's a good boy. Also, I wonder if this movie terrified kids by having them ask their parents afterwards what everyone else may have been thinking. Do all cats go to heaven too? Even despite the unsavory themes, I think this movie was well meant for anybody regardless of age, especially for this style of animation that Don Bluth was becoming known for at the time. It's mostly older audiences that review films to begin with, so there's a lot in here that children won't understand. For them, it's fun just to have a scruffy talking dog to watch. The drawn animation itself is incredibly well done for when it was made. The story is also unique for striving to be so different. And I actually kind of liked it for doing exactly that overall. It's unfortunate that this film set his studio successes back for nearly a decade. But I believe that Don Bluth's legacy is more or less cemented in bringing to life these style of films the way he wanted to. Even this movie, whether you love it or hate it, and despite being so mixed with viewers, is still being discussed today. So that is the end of this video. I will leave you all with a question. Who do you all think this movie was for? As always, thank you for watching. My name is Luke, and if you did like this video thing, you can click down below to do all that YouTube stuff. See you next time.